Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today's video, I'm going to be going over the brand new character info for the dudes that were released in the Gala Banner. Uh, because the Gala Banner is... Oops, wrong button. There are four units coming with the Gala Banner. There's also a trailer, which I'll show. Um, I'll talk over it because I'm not... If I play music, then my YouTube channel gets taken down. If, because Dragalia hires actual musicians and shit. Um, so yeah, today's video, I'm going to go over the units that are in them. Tell you how I feel about them, um, and do all that other good stuff. So before we do that, remember if you end up liking this video, leave a like, subscribe to me if you want some more Dragalia stuff, and comment about which one of these dudes you prefer the most, or which one you're hyped for, or are you even going to be doing this? The anniversary is super close by, so I actually would highly advise if you don't have a lot of stuff just in stockpile. Probably don't summon, even though I think it's very likely this dragon's going to be crazy broken. You have to... This is the time to make the hard decisions. Do you want to try this unit? Or do you want to wait for potentially the second year anniversary unit that's going to be even crazier broken? In theory. It's up to you. So let's first go into the trailer. Oh, wait. I just remembered to put the volume down right in time. My unceasing thunder will echo across the arrows. Though again, the reason why I had to put down is because Dragalia... You know what? Oh, you know what? I should put other music on top of it instead. There we go. Perfect music to go with this. Uh, okay. So there you go. There's the dude. There's his dragon. He's saying, like, yo, strong. Become strong. Strong rep represents strong. And then Valak says, yeah. I agree. Damn. Thor's scary as hell. I call upon my pack dragon. I can't- he's so scary I can't even read any of the freaking white text. You with whom I share a pact. I shall rise to the request howling from your fierce warrior soul. That's all. The full mentor. Fulaminer Galathor. Jesus, he's just really a built-ass dragon, too. Also featuring these dudes. The cast of, um, Good Omens. That's right, David Tennant is here as Nevin. Everyone's favorite character from, uh, Good Omens. He really does look a lot like him. And here we have from Fate Grand Order, the second Valkyrie form. Her hair, it really is. Like, if you ever see that fake Grand Order girl, they look almost exactly the same. I think it's Hilder, I believe their name is. Her name is Pinnon. Here's Azazafel, the Angelic, the other co-star of Good Omens. He's a dragon, I think. A what? That is insane. He's also Shadow. That's just a big-ass man. Alright, that's the end of the trail. Let's get into the actual unit info. Alright, and we're back. Wow! Apparently Tardis's Wrath is temporarily unavailable. What the hell happened? Okay. We have confronted an issue in Tardis's Wrath where the controlled adventurer becomes invincible until the end of the battle under certain circumstances. This is a, a bug someone was dealing with, I remember, um, that they were using. Yeah, okay, so it's just gone for a bit. Wow, what? That's crazy. That's great. It, oh. Yeah, I mean, no, it makes sense. Man, okay. One moment, because I need to now tell the person in the Trash Alliance who told me, hey, this thing has this bug. It's down. They put the fight down, lol, because the invincibility bug. Lol, I know. Just saw message in game while recording video and was like what there we go okay let's get into these so first of course thor he is the gala unit they have to make this gala dragon insanely strong if they want anyone to summon before the two-year anniversary uh Valix Packhorn commands lightning itself and has taken the title Fulminter. Thor possesses possesses power great enough to reduce battlefields to ash and his belief as a warrior also influences the man with whom he has sworn a pact. 
Thor's hammer deals light damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts paralysis. Continually tapping the screen while charging attack will increase damage with damage reaching its maximum potential at stage 3. The attack will unleash after a set time after reaching stage 3. Okay. Light Chariot Rider V. If I'm hmm, when Chariot Rider V. The user is attuned to light, increases strength by 50%, increases the user's energy level by one stage for every five seconds and pass, and provide a further increase to the user's strength based on the user's energy level, up to a maximum of 45% when the user is energized. If the user is attuned to light, when the user's shapeshift is undone, energize the entire team. Hmm. Um. I wanted to see if this means that he's immune during the entire time he's doing this, because I imagine if... Because what happens if you get attacked a whole bunch while you're charging it? Does that mean you just lose it? I don't know. We'll have to see how this one goes. Galathol. He's obviously extremely based on just screwing dudes up with his attacks. Regarding th Galathor's attacks, by continuing to tap the screen during the third attack of Galathor's standard combos, you can continue to attack with a third attack with a standard combo up to a certain number of times. Okay. This is a dude I'm going to have to wait and see how he looks. Um, this effect sounds like it'd be very good, for sure. Um, the one thing I'm unsure of is how his actual attack stuff goes down, but I can imagine just based off of the previous Gala Dragons, this guy's gonna be as good as them. So, not, I don't know if better, but chances are for light, a lot of light units are gonna be using this guy, I think. Um, cause that's just the way it ended up being. Uh, actually, to be fair, it only really happened with Mars. I feel like with the Shadow Dragon, the Shadow Kitty, there were some people who didn't need the Kitty, but it depended. Either way, Battle 4. He's the main, he's the headliner. Ramiel. One of the dragons known as the Five Archangels, though calm and analytical, he also has a sharp tongue. At first he had no emotions towards people, but he now feels a fatherly attachment to the Apostle who he formed a signal with. Angelic Declaration. Deals shadow damage to enemies directly ahead, inflicts poison, and reduces their defense by 20% for 15 seconds. This defense reduction effect will not stack, also immediately readies the user's second skill for use, and gradually fills the skill gauge of the user's first and second skills for 90 seconds. Abilities that increase skill gauge fill rate will not be affected by this automatic increase. Abilities that increase skill gauge... okay. Hmm. Shadow Strength and Shapeshift Preparation V. If the user is attuned to Shadow, increase Strength by 60% and fill 50% of the Dragon Gauge at the start of the quest. Hmm. Deal Shadow Damage to the enemy directly ahead. The defense of the Dragon Gauge is second. The defense reduction effect will not stay. Most immediately ready is the user's second skill for use. Gradually fills the skill gauges of the user's first and second skills for. Wait, what? I'm trying to, like. Ready is the user's second skill for use. Got you. But then it also fills the first and second skills by 90 seconds. That's the part where I'm like, it's breaking my mind here. Uh, second skills. So that probably means the two that come afterwards. Okay. Hmm. I think this guy could end up being pretty good, but it has to be a very specific type of unit that uses them. Uh, the kind of problem that I think a good amount of dragons are gonna have to are gonna run into in a post uh, their gala version is what do they offer that cannot be offered by the kitty. Um. So this has to be with someone who either wants to spam dragon or spam skills in some ways. Something that I guess the kitty isn't 100% going with them? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe if I look at the dude he's supposed to be with, I'll have a better understanding. Uh, we have Nevin. Hello, Nevin. One of the apostles of the Northern Alien Church, though he normally adopts a lackadaisical demeanor, possesses keen insight and excels in battlefield strategy. He has formed a signal with the angel Romuel. It looks to, be, it looks to him like a father. Victorious strategy creates a buff zone that lasts for 10 seconds and increases the strength of shadow attuned adventurers inside it for 25%. During the signal release, the skills also reduces the light damage taken by the entire team by 20%. For 10 seconds, this effect reduction will not stack. Sorry about that, I thought there was someone looking at me. Magnus Apocalypse deals shadow damage to a target and nearby enemies and increases the remaining time of the lock signal for 60 seconds. The attack connects during signal release. The skill instead deals shadow damage to the target and nearby enemies and deals damage to enemies in a buff zone created by users and other adventurers. Bonus damage will be granted against the enemies in buff zones created by the user. Co-op ability. Critical rate 10%. Increases critical rate by 10%. Benefits the whole team. 
<sighs> Chain co-op ability, shadow above 10 hits equals light resistance 10%. Abilities, Romeo's Covenant 2 inflicts the lock signal debuff on, a, on the user at the start of the quest for 300 seconds and grants the user a unique force strike that cannot deal damage but gradually heals the user while charging. The lock signal debuff cannot be removed by shapeshifting or incapacitation, but shapeshifting will reduce the remaining time by 240 seconds. When the lock signal effect wears off, the user will be granted the signal released effect instead, powering up the Victoria Strategy and Magnus Apocalypse skills, allowing the user to summon a Revelation Swords for 12 seconds at the expense of 10% of the user's HP, tapping the screen at the end of the standard attack combo. These revelations- what the fuck? These revelation swords will attack automatically, but their attacks will be treated as standard attacks. Blindness resistance 100%, critical damage 20%. It sounds like this guy is definitely a unit that, like, plays- <laughs> Like, you have to- This is a very weird unit, because he's one shadow. So that means that he has to kind of go in for a long fight. When I feel most shadow units- Actually, I haven't played Master. Maybe it's a little bit different there in Cayenne, where- I, he has a little bit more HP, but it really feels like um, in most short-term fights, you'll never see Nevin enter this crazy-ass sword form that he's got. I don't know. Uh, he sounds extremely cool. That's what I'll say about Nevin here. And I also... D oh, actually, now that I think about it. During some of these, it's still just a little dangerous thing. Hmm. Hmm. I I don't know, he sounds cool and I kind of want him. <laughs> That's the basics down here. Is that, I don't, know, I don't know, I don't know how good he's going to be, but I don't know, that second form sounds crazy if you can actually get it to be done in the allotted time. So, that's what I'm currently feeling. Pinon, I am the Apostle Pinon, one hand of the goddess. An apostle of the Northern Church, the youngest of the group, she feels impatient over her abilities, which are inferior to the other members. Though usually a stickler for proper for propriety, she displays her bolstrous side in battle. Sanctus Arrow deals more damage to enemies in a line and inflicts frostbite. Grants the user's Gabriel's Blessing effect for 20 seconds during Gabriel's Blessing. The user's strength is increased by 20%, the defense is increased by 20%, and damage is less than 50% of the user's damage less than 50% of the user's maximum HP is nullified. These effects do not stack and are lost upon being attacked. Okay. That's hmm, still haste, 15%. Water HP 80% equals flame resistance 6%. Gabriel's Covenant 2, same mechanic. So, inflict the locks for 300. Yeah, we get that point. Move as possible while charging, but the user will. Okay, wait. Inflicts the lock signal debuff on the user at the start of quest for 300 seconds. It grants the user a unique force strike with two increasingly powerful charge levels. Movement is possible while charging, but the user will move more slowly. Once their force strike is fully charged, it will deal extra damage to frostbite and foes and reduce locked signal's remaining time by 13 seconds if it connects. The locked signal debuff cannot be removed by shapeshifting or incapacitation. When the locked signal effect wears off, the user will be granted the signal released effect instead, allowing the user to perform special attacks that restore 5% of the damage inflicted as HP to the users and have 30% chance to increase the user's energy level by one stage. This special attack is activated by tapping the screen at the end of a standard attack combo. This recovery caps at 7% of their maximum HP. By tapping the screen again during one of these attacks, the user can immediately perform another. Burn resistance 100%, HP is 30% equal attack rate 2. Increases attack rate by 20% when HP is 70% or above. Uh, this unit also sounds super cool. It also sounds like a kind of a better version of uh, Hunter Cerise. Um, but I kind of need to see how... But less like four strike, and actually equal amounts of four strike um, spamming. But she doesn't have the same ability to just constantly spam them out because if you did, then you just lose a signet immediately. Uh, also sounds cool to me. <laughs> That's kind of my current assessment for it. I really don't play this Agido very much because I don't have a unit for it. Um, if she could be used in some way, then I would love to have her then. And I already have a water arrow unit, so she would fit. I'd be able to slide her in real quick. Uh, that's it. That's Gail Dragalia. I'll be summoning on it for sure. Um, try to get the video up as soon as possible. We'll see. Um, yeah. Those... If you are someone with not a lot of... St Let me show you again. Let me show you specifically my supply. So this is where I'm coming from. As someone with 49 tickets, 3 multi-tickets, and 50,000 Wormite, I'm not 100% confident that with 50,000 Wormite itself is enough to get the 
second anniversary unit whenever they show up, but specifically if they are get electric gear. The reason why do I feel this is because I had an experience with the prince that took equal amounts of this warm light. Um, not equal amounts, but I've definitely seen people. I think I ended up taking like 25,000 or so to get that one copy of the Gala Prince. Um, when you're chasing for a Gala unit, it's extremely expensive if you don't get insanely lucky. Like, it, as much as I get super lucky in my Gala videos, um, that's not actually reflective of what a lot of people's general experience is, which is the fact is if you actually care about a unit, the best thing you can do is save. And with the second anniversary coming up, I don't know, I think it's the best time to save right now. All those units sound really fun and really cool, but probably not. I would actually wait to see how good they are from the general consensus of everyone after some testing has been done, which I think is actually going to be impossible for Nevin and the girl, because Peon, just because their effect sounds so weird that we're actually- they're like so weirdly built that I'm not 100% sure that a DPS sim could actually accurately show you them at their top form. Um, which is, I feel, has been a problem with a lot of the DPS stuff, but that's not to discredit all the hard work that goes into that stuff. It just feels like the game is specifically trying to introduce units that just can't be boiled down to DPS constantly, so... Yeah, that's how I feel. And I think that's the end of today's video. Thank you very much if you saw it all, especially if you stuck through that weird Donkey Kong video. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys have a good day. Till next time, remember, leave a like, subscribe, comment. Peace out.